Ever since Trump quit the Iran nuclear deal over two years ago, U.S. allies in Europe have struggled to keep it alive. President-elect Biden has vowed that on day one in office, he'll call those allies to begin rebuilding strained ties. But his path back into the deal won't be easy, and it certainly won't be fast. Bloomberg's U.N. correspondent and international government reporter David Weiner is here now to give us more. David, it's so great to have you in the studio with us. Um, how did policy toward Iran's development of nuclear technology change under President Trump? Well, Trump took the exact opposite approach uh, to Obama. As you know, Obama's Iran strategy was to engage with Iran and do a sort of give and take, you know, to sort of reach a compromise that would gradually foster ties with Iran and sort of bring Iran back from the cold. That was kind of the overarching idea. And I think what we've seen with Trump is quite the opposite. He's saying, let's put maximum pressure on Iran. Let's apply the most stringent sanctions possible. Possibly the most stringent or one of the toughest economic sanctions campaign on any country the U.S. has ever targeted. And the idea was that Iran would eventually cave into U.S. demands and simply say, you know, we'll do as you're saying. But... Mm -hmm. It hasn't quite worked that way. Well, well, the ultimate goal here, of course, is to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons in Iran, to prevent a, a nuclear Iran. Uh, is it fair to say at this point, or even know at this point, which of these strategies has been more successful? Um, I think what we can say is that um, since Trump left the deal in 2018, the breakout uh, time, what's it, you know, the breakout time to, towards a bomb, according to experts, has shortened. Iran mm. is getting closer uh, to the capability that it would take to produce a bomb. Uh, what can be said as well is that Iran has gotten economically weaker. Trump really squeezed Iran, and Iran is very weak economically. But that sort of strategy has made Iran also sort of flare out and uh, target uh, oil uh, tankers. Iran has supported proxies throughout the region. Uh, which is all of all of which has been antagonistic towards U.S. interests. All of this leads to the question: What does this look like on January twentieth, twenty twenty one? What is the situation that President Elect Biden inherits his first day in office? I think it's a really good question. I think you know Biden was part of the Obama uh, administration that signed the twenty fifteen deal. So of course Biden would like to, and his foreign policy view would be to get back into this deal. But under Trump. Four years passed, and, and things have quite changed. The landscape is different. Uh, the first thing to be, I think the most important thing, if you look at the deal, one of its uh, flaws, according to critics, was that it had a bunch of things that were expiring. So now, if Biden were to join the deal, he'd be joining a deal that's expiring, and that's politically difficult. And one more thing, um, the Middle East has changed as well. Israel and the UAE have now uh, struck deals, and they're sort of likely to bandy up and say, hey, um, let us get involved in this. Do you think those deals are, are here to stay? I mean, they are, they are signature accomplishments of the Trump administration. I think that's you know one thing that's been sort of a demonstrable achievement of the Trump administration. Yeah. And I really do think uh, that's something Biden will want to encourage. I want to talk about international relations sort of through, through a wider lens here. You've covered the UN for, for many years at this point. We know that President Trump is not a fan of, of these post-World War II international alliances and these international ties that the US has with countries around the world. Uh, you and I were talking just before, and you said uh, that your reporting has found that it's been it's been difficult uh, for people for Americans who are working abroad and, and and working in these institutions over the last couple of years. How does that change uh, with a different Secretary of State and and with a different uh, State Department? Well, yeah, there will be sort of a in style. It, it'll be just completely different. There will be a big sigh of relief from uh, you know especially Western allies. Uh, they were the ones that felt sort of the most. Um, you know, at risk from Trump's policies. I think there was a genuine concern from some of those uh, ambassadors and, and uh, um, diplomats that when Trump would sort of demean uh, NATO or, or the UN, those guys were seeing a real threat to the transatlantic relationship. I, I wonder what it also means for Americans who are situated around the world right now, who are part of... Um, what pejoratively has been referred to as, as the deep state, and I, mm -hmm. I, I want to be really careful using that term, because the, the, the Trump administration has used it in a pejorative way, but in fact there are career foreign service officers around the world um, who I think have, have felt really strained uh, under uh, the Trump administration. 
No, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, especially if they are placed in, in countries uh, that, you know, Trump has taken an antagonistic view uh, towards, then I think it'll be much easier for them. But don't forget that there are countries like Israel where, you know, it might sort of go in reverse, right? So it really depends where they were. David, thanks so much for, for joining us. That's Bloomberg UN correspondent and international government reporter David Weiner. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great weekend, David. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.